Yeah, so, you know, after kind of months and months of research with all the manufacturers and vendors of, of ice vending machines, uh, we settled on a, a company called Everest Ice and Water Systems. Had a great call with them, a lot of information. Uh, really kind of for us, checked all the boxes we were looking for in a vendor or in a partner. Uh, went ahead and pulled the trigger, yeah, right on two machines. Didn't have a place to put them yet. Um, and that kind of started the clock ticking, uh, especially as we got our progress updates where the machine was in the production value. And then when we got our delivery date, it really had to light the fire and say, now is the time to lock in locations and you got to get going. And for me personally, I, I like that little bit of a, a nudge uh, by having the pressures and having that deadline, knowing a considerable investment was getting delivered was like, yeah, really got to get going here. And we were okay. very fortunate you know, to be able to place our first two machines uh, very, very quickly. And then, you know, with some blessings and some, some good business, uh, we've been able to grow and expand even further. So we, we couldn't be happier at the moment. Yeah, so it's not, um, you know, two-day Amazon Prime shipping. You got a little bit of lead time here. You got a couple months to work with. Like, okay, now I've lit that fire. Now I got to go find uh, some place to put them. Uh, I want to get back into, you know, how much they cost. But talk to me about that location-finding place. I, I think that's probably the golden rule of all vending businesses is location. You know, where am I going to find a steady stream of customers who are going to be using this thing? So w what was on the short list for you as far as where to place them? We kind of just started sort of in our own heads of where do we buy ice when we needed it? Um, you know, and, and obviously uh, big box stores, gas stations, convenience stores are, are the obvious choices. And we kind of started to expand from that and say, well, where else do people need ice? Um, some of the first things that come to mind are, you know, marinas, uh, parks, any sort of outdoor recreation areas. And the more we thought about it, the more we started to kind of craft what we call destination ice. And we started looking now at locations where we know people are going to be. How can we get the ice in front of them? And, you know, we live up in the panhandle of Florida. And so we're right on a beach, very, very heavy tourist destination. And we started looking around and, and none of our big condo complexes for the most part had anything on property. Uh, so as these millions of visitors were coming down every year and needing ice and water, you know, they were having to get in their car and drive to you know, a big box store, convenience store. And okay. that was kind of our light bulb moment it was like, you know, Hey, if we can put a machine that is self-sufficient in these locations and get people to realize it's there. Now they no longer have to leave. They can buy all the ice they want 24 hours a day right there at their condominium complex. Don't have to put dad in the car. Doesn't have to lose his parking place. It's there. It's available. And we started our first two machines there and immediately saw uh, a return, which was great. We saw great success in customer satisfaction from the condominium complexes, from direct feedback from, from customers. And so we kind of said, you know, hey, I think this is our perfect little niche to get in here and, you know, knock on wood. Thankfully, they have done very well. But, you know, it, it, location is the number one question I get asked when I talk to potential, you know, customers or current owners even. Uh, where do we put our machine? How are we going to make money? And you got to get creative. You know, there's really no way around it. You got to figure out where the people are, where they're willing to spend their money. Uh, what's your market like? You know, what is what are your competitors selling ice for? You you have to be at a, a competitive price point, and you know location, location, location is true as in vending as it is in real estate as it is yeah. you know with a lot of things. Uh, so really, that's the bulk of time and research is set into to looking for sites and locations uh, to put a machine for the best chance of success. Yeah, I think that's an important note that other people were already doing this, it just may not have been as convenient to the specific customer set that you had in mind. Like, okay, how can I you right. know, wedge myself into this market and carve out a little bit of market share there? I think that's really interesting. You know, my question is, if it's so lucrative, why weren't the, the condo owners or the building developers, property managers, like, why not just do it themselves? Or just like, it's something that wasn't 
on their radar? What do, what do you think that is? A lot of folks still don't realize it, this, the industry exists. You know, that they're well aware that, you know, outside of the gas station, there's a an ice merchandiser where, uh, you know, a local ice provider fills it with bags and you yeah. go and you, you go inside, you pay your couple bucks, you grab your bag, you're out the door. A lot of people don't know that ice and water is available in a vending avenue. Um, so as we sort of start to educate them on that, they kind of go, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. Some folks don't want to get into it, especially some of the property managers or landowners. Uh, you know, they don't want to pay the initial cost for the machine. Uh, you know, it is it is an investment. Uh, okay. and, and then they don't want to be tasked with the maintenance of the machine, the installation, uh, the cleaning. You know, most folks, they just don't want to do it or they just don't have time. And that's where, you know, a company like ours or, or many, many other throughout the country have found kind of a foothold and say, you know, hey, we'll we'll put the machine there. We'll install it. We'll do all of the heavy lifting. You just have to be able to give us a little bit of space and access to some power and water and then sit back and you know, you just enjoy the amenity of having a machine there. And, you know, one of our biggest selling points as we talk to potential locations is it's free money. You know, if you're the landowner, we don't need anything from you. We, we don't ask you to, to touch the machines. We don't need any maintenance on the machines. Once we're done with the installation, it's there, it's running. We're going to give you a set amount of money every month or every quarter, whatever we've agreed to. Okay. You get that. that. Yeah, that was the next question of like, well, you know, are you giving them a cut of the sales or just like have flat, a flat fee for, you know, to park the thing in this space and have access to your power and water? Yeah, I mean, and there's a number of ways you can kind of sort of set up a contract with a landowner. All of our contracts are, are flat fees. Uh, so every month, the landowner knows exactly what they're going to get. Uh, at the end of the year, they know how much they're going to make. Uh, and, and that's whether the machine, you know, sells two bags of ice every day or 100 bags of ice every day. They're going to get the same amount of money for doing virtually nothing. And uh, you know, most of us will admit that free money is something we won't pass up. <laughs> and that's true for the individual. It's true for a business. You know, so for them, it, it's a very lucrative opportunity that has almost no outlay. You know, there's, there's yeah. no labor. I really don't so need you, them. You're kind of covering the initial installation, like water hookup, if something, I guess, if there's any construction costs needed for that install. Yeah, we'll go ahead and, and cover the install, uh, get the machine in. And, you know, we, we do ask uh, our, our current landowners, we have asked to basically let us tap into the existing utilities uh, that are already there. And that just helps with the, the cost of installation. Uh, it keeps it manageable. Uh, we have looked at some locations that, you know, maybe would have been a great spot to have a, an ice and water vending machine. But then by the time we calculate the installation costs, uh, sometimes they're just too astronomically high. And, and you have to say, could we recoup that cost within a number of years? Is it yeah. worth it? Um, you know, compared to a site that, maybe may not have as much vehicle count or foot traffic, but the installation is much more straightforward. Uh, so it's really, a, you know, it's kind of a balancing act. And, you know, a lot of the folks I talk to, I tell them, you got to wear two hats. You got to wear one as where do I put my machine to make the most money and then flip it around and you got to be the guy installing it. You know, how much is it going to cost me to install this machine? And now if I can balance those, I've got a good spot. Um, but yeah, it's, this the sites are the are the toughest part of it but once you do one you get more comfortable and then you do two and you get a lot more comfortable uh, and then as you get into three and four machines doing site surveys becomes pretty easy because uh, you know exactly what you're looking for you, you hopefully by then you've dialed in a a plumber an electrician who can help and they're familiar with the machine's needs and then you're kind of kind of off and running a little bit you know it, okay. it makes it much much easier He's starting out, looking around your town, looking for a thirsty crowd, so to speak, and looking, surveying the surrounding areas and buildings, being like, where would be a good spot? I think that makes a lot of sense, starting with you know, location first and then trying to find uh, trying to find a place to put it that makes sense and somebody who would be receptive to that message. Hey, I want to pay you a flat monthly fee. Is there a, is there a rule of thumb or a ballpark like? couple hundred bucks a month. I, I like what's, what's reasonable. 
Yeah, I would say kind of a, a good ballpark or you know sort of a good neighborhood. Um, you know, between two and three hundred dollars a month uh, is a pretty fair going rate for a, a lease because you, effectively you're only leasing about thirty square feet of space. Uh, yeah, and the machine is is relatively small. So for that amount of space, you, that's a pretty good chunk, especially for a landowner that doesn't have to do anything. Um, you know, th- there are some folks that will do some profit sharing contracts or some like percentage of revenues. And, you know, those just have to be worked out on the front end. I think there's a lot of gray areas in those that has to be talked about, worked out on the front side of a contract and agreed to and very clearly spelled out. Uh, to make those work, which is you know why we kind of just go with a flat fee and say, here's the here's the amount we've agreed to it. Now you get yours, and it's up to us to make the sh- the machine succeed. Um, and I kind of like having that responsibility a little bit more on our shoulders uh, than kind of relying on with somebody else that, that may not have the same amount of drive or uh, intuition to to start selling ice because you know at the end of the day we're just selling frozen chunks of water. <laughs> It's a great, it's a great business to be in. People are always going to want that stuff. Highly seasonal in my neck of the woods, maybe less so in uh, in the panhandle of Florida, but I imagine you see some ups and downs during a tourist season and, and kind of the off-peak times there too. But I, I was curious because these machines are not cheap. What do they cost, like 50 grand a piece? Like it's a, it's a bit of an investment. Yeah, you're probably looking, you know, depending on the model, anywhere between fifty thousand up to maybe fifty-eight thousand. Uh, then there's some optional upgrades and add-ons that you can always look at for your situation. Uh, and so, I just want to draw that in contrast to like a refurbished, you know, Coke and snack machine for twenty-five hundred. You know, maybe even less from a disgruntled vending machine route owner. Just like I, I want to get out of this, I want to get out of this business. It's like okay, it's significantly more expensive but do you find that the either the margins are better or the demand is higher or it's easier to play like what are the other factors that went into that versus a a different type of vending business you know specifically compared to let's say like a a coca-cola or soda vending soda vending machine um you know if you're fortunate and you can buy your products from you a, a large box retailer uh, you know, Costco, Sam's Club, but what have you, you know, what's your cost per can? Uh, you know, so let's just for ease of numbers, say it's a dollar uh, per can of Coke and you're going to sell it for two fifty. So, you know, a dollar fifty is a healthy profit margin. But by the time you add in there your time to go get it, how much fuel did it take you to drive to the store to get it? How often do you have to get it? Uh, what's the expiration date on, you know, these, these soda cans? Uh, are you going to sell enough or are you going to have expired product in the machine? So once you start to add all that up, uh, your margin really dwindles very quickly. Uh, and then if you get into food vending, it diminishes even faster because of the expiration dates. And again, your, okay. your chances are you're still running to you know, a, a, a wholesale club uh, to buy in bulk. So you, you see your margins start to decrease pretty rapidly once you add in all of the ancillary costs. Versus Compare having that the product to, just coming out of coming out of the pipe, coming out of the wall. Yeah, um, you know. So then you compare that to to ice and water vending. Uh, you know, it costs about eight cents uh, to make ten pounds of ice, roughly. Wow. And you know, let's just say you're selling that for three dollars if your market supports that price. So now you're at two dollars and ninety two cents of, uh, of profit back a little bit out, out of that for maybe planned maintenance and, and some of those things, but you're probably going to land in the 240 range um, per bag. That's pretty tough to beat, you know, and, and if you can yeah. do, you know, let's say 20, 30, 40 bags a day, uh, you know, you can see those, those profits start to rack up pretty quickly and your margin stays the same. You know, it, it really not, doesn't cost anymore whether you produce 10 pounds of ice or, 500 pounds of ice it's still a kilowatt per hour usage on the power it's still a certain amount of water coming into the machine and it's almost fixed you know now obviously the power company is going to raise rates every year because everybody does but you're still looking at a relatively low low cost uh, to produce a product that replenishes itself Uh, and that's one of the nice things about the everest machines is you don't have to stock it 
you know, it's constantly running and replenishing itself, having an available product that you don't have to go do anything for. Uh, you know, it, as long as the machine's up and running, it's making ice that's ready to sell, and then hopefully you're making money. Yeah, I've I've heard that from side hustle show listeners with traditional vending routes, you know, candy and soda machines. It's like it can make good money, especially if you have machines in the right location, but you essentially have, you know, the job of going to constantly restock that. And so it's mm -hmm. like, it's a trade off of whether or not that's worth it and whether or not you can get it to the point where you can pay somebody else to go and restock it for you. It's like, you know, and then, and you know, how your margins get even narrower. So oh, yeah, it's exactly. a, a trade off well, on that front. You know, and then too, and I've got some friends that are in traditional vending, you know, and one of their biggest complaints is they will sell out of, you know, maybe Coke in their vending machine, but there's still plenty of diet Coke. There's plenty of, you know, whatever flavors they're offering. There's plenty of the other ones, but they're yeah. out of Coke, you know? So now they've got to go back to the store just to get Coke to put in the machine. Yeah. Uh, and again, now your, your margin is now even coming down, you know, kind of further again, because now you're stocking one off items uh, versus replenishing the whole machine. Uh, so it's nice having a, a vending machine that, replenishes its product by itself <laughs> i don't i don't have to do anything and it just keeps making ice that's right so if i'm looking at this i would i would classify this as a buying cash flow type of business we had a quote from uh, ace chapman on the show years ago when i need money i go buy it and he was talking about acquiring you know acquiring businesses that were already successful like i want to that zero to one is the hardest part um you know so i want to buy something that's already gone through that you know mm -hmm. that risky failure phase that is already operating it's like oh that's super interesting did you ever look at buying somebody else's route for this or is it kind of like look we're gonna it's a relatively new thing uh, you know, to compete with those big box retailers with the ice chests out in front so it's kind of more you know blue ocean so to speak where i'm going to the, the existing route didn't exist yet. So I'm going to have to be the guy to go out and build it and make this upfront investment in the equipment. Yeah. We kind of looked to sort of cut our own path. Uh, you know, we knew the, the big box stores are obviously are always going to have ice. Uh, your gas stations are always going to have uh, some sort of ice merchandiser there. And we kind of started looking to the places that, that don't have it. Um, you know, and how can we capture that audience? So we, we kind of knew we were, I don't want to say reinventing the wheel, but we were turning a little bit left in the fork in the road where other people hadn't. And, and we kind of wanted to, you know, in particular to our area, uh, there were no self-service vending ice machines kind of in the area. There's a, a few of the big, big ones on the side of the road, uh, you know, that typically weren't very busy just because they weren't in spots people were needing ice uh, it yeah. existed but you were still having to drive uh okay. you know and half the time you know and of course we went out and did our research we would drive to all the machines and kind of check them out and spend time there uh you know half the time they were out of bags or uh there was no phone number to call if you put your money in and the thing didn't work and we kind of said you know this is there's a better way to do this. And so we, you know, we kind of developed that destination model of putting the machine where the people are going to be making it accessible. Uh, we do put our phone number on, on every one of them. And, you know, we'll get calls from some folks that'll say, you know, Hey, I put my money in and nothing happened. And 99% of the time, it's just us kind of giving them a brief instruction of how to use the machine. And then yeah. they're like, oh, okay, I got it. You know? And, the machine does have instructions printed right on it, right next to where of you course. put your money, but nobody yeah. reads those. You know, no. it's, <laughs> I they find the out, phone yeah. number, but yeah, they don't read the directions. So. <laughs> Is it something that a, a bank would lend you money for, like to just to, to finance that upfront cost? Yeah, you know, um, I, you know, I've talked to some people that have gone through uh, through some of the national banks. Uh, some folks have gone to like a local credit union. Uh, you know, to, to loan on these, uh, the equipment is an asset, you know, so it does have a value to it. Uh, so most banks will, will, will lend money to it, obviously with using the machine as collateral. Uh, okay. Now Everest does have a, a company they work directly with, uh, for financing if, if folks were interested in that. So the, the company I believe is called Leaf Financial and they work hand in hand with Everest. So if you were looking at a machine and looking at financing it, uh, you can either contact Everest to get to Leaf or you can contact Leaf directly. 
the price of entry is relatively steep compared to a lot of the vending world. Um, you know, now we compare it to the real estate world and it's very cheap. You know, it, it's all very relative. But yeah, there's a lot of options for uh, for financing uh, the machines because, like I said, it, it is an it's an asset in itself. You know, it's got a value. That's a probably a helpful reframe versus well, I'm going to buy a three bedroom, two bath house in this neighborhood, and it's going to rent for you know fifteen hundred bucks a month, and like or you know for a fraction of that home purchase mm-hmm. price i could you know buy this automated machine that hopefully is going to have less maintenance issues i'm going to still find you some negotiation up front in terms of location but not going to have to um hopefully once it's there it's there and maybe you sign a 12 month right. term and you know renewal clauses but like don't have to have tenants moving in and moving out and lots of it's an interesting way to, to put it in the math, you know, maybe work similarly. It's like, well, here's my upfront investment. What do I expect to make back from this on a monthly basis? And what's my break even window and, and all that stuff. And it sounds like yours are just about paid off or if not already paid off at this point. I say, thankfully we've been fortunate. They've been very busy. Uh, so we've been able to recoup our initial investments, uh, on, on our first two machines. Our third machine is just about there. Uh, yeah. and our, fourth machine uh, we've just put in recently so it's very young and it's kind of lifespan uh, yeah it's been doing very well uh, very quickly which we're very happy to see <laughs> and, yeah it's got to be fun like once it's once it's free and clear then it's like well this is all gravy at this point that's a good, exactly. a good spot to be yeah, yeah. I mean, there... you've got some carrying costs you know you've got a little bit of maintenance every year that needs to be done and obviously you need to pay your landowner uh, but yeah, it's nice, you know, when you sit down and start to, to kind of do your books and go, you know, Hey, yeah, uh, more and more of this is now my money or the company's money mm-hmm. versus giving it to, you know, a, a bank or, uh, you know, a financial institution that they didn't do anything. They just wrote you a, a check and are killing you on the interest rate. And it's like, yeah, getting out from under them is a great <laughs> feeling. Is there a typical sales volume for, you know, what's a, what's a good month for you with the, the, I guess, four that you have now? Yeah, so four machines currently, you know, the 4th of July is kind of our, sort of the Super Bowl uh, of ice vending. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> it's just everybody in the world is, is needing ice because almost everybody is doing something fun, you know, for the 4th of July. And of yeah. course, being a beach destination where we are, uh, you know, the beaches are packed. Uh, that entire week is just packed. Uh, so we were very fortunate. A number of our machines were actually selling out of ice, uh, which is uncommon. You know, the the machines like were... you like you literally couldn't make it fast enough. Yeah, it just couldn't couldn't make it fast enough for the demand. Um, okay, you know, and it's unusual for our machines to sell out completely because uh, they do produce about 2,500 pounds of ice per day. Um, wow. So you're looking at about 250 available bags to be sold. Uh, so to run a machine completely dry is unusual. But the nice thing is it's constantly replenishing. So every about 15 minutes, it's just made another couple more bags of ice ready for sale. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we would get some phone calls and just have to tell folks, you know, hey, hang out for a few more minutes on the beach or, you know, maybe grab another cocktail from the, the pool bar and you'll hear the ice drop. You know, you, you can hear it clear as day. And as soon as it does, you're first in line. And, you know, folks go and get it. We're kind of OK with that. And they said, you know, hey, well, we need ice and we don't want to go anywhere. And you go, well, of course not. You know, you don't want to go anywhere on the 4th of July. You want to enjoy your time with your family, or your friends or whatever you're doing. And. Yeah, so they they kept them very busy uh, for those time frames, and and really all summer uh, the machines have stayed very busy. So, you know, a, a day of a hundred and fifty to two hundred bags of ice being sold is not uncommon uh, during our summer months, our, our busy busy season. Uh, you know, and you're just, at you're at two fifty three bucks a bag. Yeah, we sell them for for three dollars a bag uh, okay. for a ten pound bag of ice, and you know we when we Gosh, were doing Florida prices research, are so cheap. <laughs> Well, and it's funny, you know, because we went to a lot of research in our pricing and you go to a gas station, they're selling seven pounds for like three dollars and 19 cents or three forty nine. And you go, oh, yeah, they're getting three fifty for a seven pound bag. You know, hey, we can we can take them to market. You know, that's not a problem. We're just going to advertise three bucks for 10 pounds. Yeah. And, you know, it, it 
people and it's funny because you're only talking about roughly 50 cents uh, but it's amazing how much it resonates with people that they want to save that 50 cents and get three more pounds of ice and it's like that's why we exist is to make that connection for you um, there you go. And yeah. what happens during the during the winter? Like, are the beaches empty? Are people still coming by to buy? And now you're like, well, shoot, I'm not even going to make my three hundred dollar you know rent placement for for the luxury of having it in this spot. Yeah, so you know we do have a little bit of a winter. Uh, you know, we call it a Florida winter. Uh, so for us, it's probably about in the fifties. Um, we're freezing to death. You know, for the people that live here, we're all bundled up, and we try not to go outside because it's fifty two degrees. Uh, but we do do still see a, a large number of tourists coming to the area. A lot of them coming from Canada or the Upper Midwest, uh, you know, yeah. for two or three months at a time, and they're here. And to them, a fifty degree day is beautiful. I mean, they're wearing <laughs> shorts tropical. and a t shirt. Yeah, they're walking the beach. Uh, they're asking if they can get in the pools, and it's you know we're freezing to death, and they're enjoying it. So you know, we do see a reduction in sales in the wintertime just based on the amount of people in the area. Um, yeah. But because the machine also sells water, uh, we see a, a very marked increase in water sales. Um, you know, folks that aren't from the area maybe are not used to the water we have or are very, very health conscious, uh, especially in kind of today's day and age. So they yeah. can go to the machine uh, with their own container and for 50 cents, get a gallon of pure, purified, filtered water uh, that's gone through, you know, five filters. It's gone through a UV okay. bulb. Um, you know, yeah. it's as clean as it can get. And, you know, again, it's right on site. You know, they're not having to give their money to a big box store and they're not having to leave, you know. And, and yeah. So we see a lot of water sales uh, in those winter months as folks come to the area. Um, and I've even had some folks from, from Canada tell me, you know, their water where they're at is great. They love it. They drink it out of the tap. They come to Florida and they just don't like the water. You know, it, it's, yeah, got extra oh, it tastes chlorine like, it tastes it. like yeah. the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard water. Uh, and they, they just don't want it, you know, so they're going to spend money They and they plan for it. You know, a lot of them bring down their own five gallon jugs with them on their trip, knowing wow. that's what they're going to use. Uh, so you know, for us, it made sense just to say, well, hey, go to our machine and you can fill that entire jug up for $2.50 and you don't ever have to leave. And and they yeah. go, oh, yeah, this is great. You know, and, um, you know, we do see, and oddly enough, and I had never guessed it, but it makes complete sense. Uh, around the holidays, we actually see a very big bump in ice sales. And talking to folks, we've realized that, you know, for especially for Thanksgiving being such a food holiday, people's refrigerators are filled with food. They don't have any place for the sodas or the juice for the kids or, you know, the, the, the cocktails and beverages for the adults. Uh, okay. So they're putting them in coolers and just icing down the coolers and setting them out on their patio or in the living room. And yeah. that's where they're using to keep the drinks cool because they've got, you know, the turkey, the ham, whatever's in the fridge. They just don't have space for all the drinks. And, it, you know, we kind of never thought of it. And then saw it, and now it just now it makes sense. Go, oh, why didn't we think of that ahead of time? Um, yeah. So for our our second year, we, we did quite a bit of advertising around those holidays for for ice, and we'll do it again as we get closer this year because uh, it's just one of those things we never made the connection until it happened. Uh, but it's a, a good example of the market driving the business. Yeah, I was going to ask on the marketing side if the location would just speak for itself or it sounds like you're doing a little bit of proactive effort to let people know that hey these exist and it's a good value and you know come on in and, and buy stuff from us yeah i think absolutely you, you, even if you've got one of the greatest spots you know that you could ever find i, I think you still got to do some marketing and advertising we did uh some some wind feathers you know some of those signs we did some real estate signs uh kind of around the machines uh, obviously we did some flyers, you know, just kind of around the properties. And then some of the biggest traction we've seen was just digital marketing, uh, the social media platforms. Uh, we've been able to use those quite a bit to actually target specific areas, uh, that we really want to go after for ice sales. And then, you know, everybody in the world uses Google for everything. Uh, so getting onto Google's listing service, uh, really paid a lot of dividends. 
and you know the fact that people will google everything uh, oh interesting so you could create a google whatever they call it these days google my business profile for the machine itself like at this location yeah um and that's kind of what we did you know we we went onto the google maps kind of site and put our location yeah. and our address in had it linked to um you know our, our website or just a, even a brief profile of uh the address the phone number those things and you know as folks are looking for anything we all just google um so you know not, the nice part now is you get on there and you google ice near me yeah and we have multiple locations showing up uh that are attached to a map and you, you just click the little map function it tells you how to get there and, and it really and that's a free service you know we don't pay for advertising on google uh we don't pay per click uh because the little bit i've looked into it it can get very expensive uh trying yeah. to do sponsored ads through google and we just found that the map listing service uh really gave us kind of a lot of bang for no buck uh, yeah i didn't even think about that whereas you wouldn't you know you know, search for like Snickers bar near me. Like if you're looking for a traditional vending machine or a, you know, a snack right. vending machine, but you know, for ice, that totally works. Yeah. You know, and we get calls quite a bit from folks that did literally just say, well, I, I just Googled you, you know, I typed in ice yeah. near me and you you came up and we've even gotten calls for things that are not in our traditional business model, uh, delivering ice, you know, maybe for a, a party or a birthday party. Uh, bulk ice, you know, for like fishing vessels, you know, stuff that uh, we just, okay. we never intended to to do. It wasn't in the original plan, uh, but people sought us out and said, you know, can you do this? And we kind of think about it for a minute and go, yeah, well, I'm not sure how yet, but we'll <laughs> figure it out. And yeah, we can deliver you ice. And, you know, so it's a, a lot of the business is creatively solving some of these opportunities that we didn't even know were coming down the road, uh, but being able to say yes to them, you know, and it's just like, yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out, but we can make that happen. For sure. You mentioned I got to go and uh, restock the bags from time to time. What else? I mean, what's a week in the life look like in terms of the hours that you're putting into it? You got to go and collect, take the money out if people are paying in cash, but what's going into it time-wise? Now, the time investment's really on the front end. You know, it's it's finding the location, it's getting the machine installed and set up, it's learning the machine. You know, that's where your biggest time commitments are going to come in. Then it really starts to to dwindle uh, as you kind of hone and streamline your processes. So for me personally now, you know, I check on all of our machines multiple times a week because they're all relatively close to where I'm working or living. Um, you know, I'm at a machine for maybe ten minutes, if that. And that's for yeah, checking to make sure there's plenty of bags available, uh, making sure there's change in the machine. Obviously, the fun part, getting my money out of the machine that I can take to the bank. Uh, you know, a yeah. general cleaning, you know, it may be 10 minutes per machine. Um, you know, it, so for a pretty minimal time investment, once you're familiar with the operation uh, and how it works. And now, actually, there are machines that are available uh, through Everest that you can choose not to do the cash option. You can simply have the credit and debit option. Uh, so now you've removed the cash completely, uh, which would speed that process up even further. Now you're just doing kind of a general clean and, and you're making sure it's got bags, uh, but you're, you're cashless. And yeah, you know, which I maybe think... would cut down on potential crime, vandalism, you know, people trying to get cash out of the machine. Have you had anything like that come up? Knock on wood, we, we've been fortunate. Uh, we, we've not had to deal with any vandalism. Um, the machines are, are fairly robustly built. I mean, you know, it's they're designed to keep honest people honest, I always like yeah. to say. Uh, if somebody's really intent on getting in there, uh, it'll take them a hot minute, but, you know, they could, <laughs> they could get in there. Um, you know, so we've been fortunate not to have to deal with, with that quite yet. Um, all, all of our locations do have security cameras, uh, either pointed at the machine or in the area. So I think that helps quite a bit. Yeah. So it sounds like super time leveraged, but still a little bit of hands-on on a weekly basis. And I remember talking with, with Hannah Ingram a few months ago with her car wash business, where it's similar, where, you know, you know, buying this asset that's going to spin off this cash flow, but somebody's got to go clean out these bays. You know, somebody's got to go mm -hmm. be on hand. It's not a ton of time. It was a half an hour a day in her case, 
but you know, it still required her to be there. And so the question is, well, what happens if you need to travel yourself or if you're incapacitated in some way, or you just want to take a week off, like there's some, some time required or like what happens if you're, if you're not able to do that? Yeah. My family and I really enjoy traveling. We try to travel uh, almost as much as we can. Uh, so we plan our machine maintenance sort of with our vacation or our travel schedule. So a day or two before we're leaving out of town, uh, you know, we'll be at the machine making sure the, the bags are fully stocked, all the change is stocked. Everything is as good as we can make it uh, so okay. that we can leave. Um, you know, I, I do have a few folks, kind of some friends that are around that, you know, I'll give a, the keys to the machine and say, you know, if something terrible happens, I'll call you. You can go check on it. But for the most part, they don't ever need to go. Uh, the one nice thing about the Everest machines in particular is they've got the ability to be remotely managed. Uh, you can do it from your your phone, an iPad, a laptop, a desktop computer. Uh, you can actually log into your ice machine and see okay. what the sales are for the day. Uh, you know, if there's any alert, error codes or alert codes on the machine, uh, you can check. Yeah, diagnostics, health. Uh, of Gosh, the machine. That, would, that would get addicting, I imagine. <laughs> oh, just hitting refresh on the app, be like, how many how did we sell today? It really can be. And at some point, you've got to be like, all right, I'm going to put this away now. Like, I, I need to stop looking at it. Um, yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> get a it almost a becomes like oh, the stock another market one. ticker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, oh, you know, oh, my goodness. You know, and you got to just like, you know what? Let it be. Um, but, you know, it, it's nice having that functionality because then you, you don't, you aren't beholden to the machine as much. You know, so if you do want to travel, you've got the ability to to do that. Uh, one of the things we really like that is it really come in handy is actually from that remote system. You know, I can choose to dispense uh, water or ice uh, from my phone to the customer, and and we've had to do it from time to time. You know, somebody calls and and maybe just cannot figure out the machine or. You know, it's just something goofy's going on where it's not working. And, and our goal is to customer satisfaction. So okay. it, it makes it really nice for me to be able to tell them, you know, hey, look, hold on one second. Let me get this on my phone. Get your cooler or your bag or your jug ready, whichever you're doing. And I'm uh -huh. going to hit this button from here, and it's going to give you your ice. And wow. they're, they're, they're amazed. They're like, you can do that? And I'm going, yes, <laughs> That's cool. thankfully I can. <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, and that way we're, we're keeping customers happy. Because we're still, they're still getting a product, and I think more times than not, it tends to be them, again, kind of not reading the directions, not following through with it. But uh, right, you know, and oh, oh, by the way, can you leave me a five star Google review? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, you know, in our kind of point of view, in stands for customer services, we'll happily to, you know, get you that bag of ice or that gallon of water uh, to keep you happy versus you know trying to get have you be frustrated uh you know I, I would rather you be happy uh and, and me give you a bag of ice than than get your three dollars but have you leave yeah ticked off and yeah and then go on google and oh this you know ice yeah, ice yeah. Blah, blah blah and it's like you know you know the technology is there to, to be able to assist the, the the customer um and that's really what makes it easy you know i'm bad about uh when we do travel especially when we fly uh, you know, as soon as we get to an airport or connection airport, oh yeah, I'm pulling my phone out or an iPad out and I'm looking to see, you know, and uh, my girlfriend just kind of like, really now? And I'm like, I, I, I can't help. Hey. You know, it's, yeah. I want to see how what much, we're doing How much today. do we make while we're on this flight? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how much is, you know, how much is this helping pay for this vacation? You know? <laughs> That's great. That's great. I, w I would totally be the same way there. Uh, Steve, what's surprised you the most over the last year and a half, two years of doing this? Honestly, the growth. Um, you know, when we got into it, we did two machines with the intent of just placing two machines and just seeing how it went. Um, it was never, it was never looked at as truly a, to become a full-time business or that could grow into a full-time business. It was just kind of a, Hey, let's just throw these out there, see what happens. We think they'll do okay. And the demand really started to take off. And then we started kind of getting phone calls from other properties, other landowners that had seen the machines or heard about the machines. And now they were interested in maybe having us place one at their location. And, it, and that kind of surprised me because it, it really sort of took on a life of its own and, and grew organically. You know, we didn't, 
Uh, we didn't send out, you know, direct mailing. We didn't do a ton of flyers. Uh, we weren't casting a real wide net. And yeah. it's still, you know, as the word spread of what it was, you know, people started calling us, uh, you know, and now we're in a very fortunate position, at least for the current moment. Uh, you know, we're not actively looking for sites. Uh, we're simply answering the phone of sites that are now calling us and seeing if we can make uh, a, a deal or an arrangement to put a machine there. Yeah, that gosh, that's a nice spot to be in. Yeah, and it was something I, I never really envisioned would have happened. Um, you know, and probably through my own kind of naivety, I just thought is it was it similar to similar condo complexes, or you know, what type of uh, venues are reaching out? Yeah, um, multiple condo complexes. Um, actually, our latest installation is going into an RV park and campground. Uh, and okay. That particular okay. location knew somebody who knew somebody. Uh, who owned at one of these condo complexes and somehow they were talking about ice and the person was like, Hey, there's this really cool ice machine down on the pool deck. You should come check it out. Uh, they went over looked at it. So this is cool. Got the phone number and called and said, you know, Hey, we're interested in this. What can we do? And it, then we just set a meeting and, and went and, it, you know, we were able to thankfully connect the dots and now we've installed a machine for them. And like I said, that's our fourth location now. Um, yeah, and got, the metrics yeah. that you're looking at are, you know, how many how many potential customers are passing through this campground or RV park, you know, on a, on a weekly, monthly basis. Like, what? Exactly. How how do you get a sense of like, ah, I don't know if this is the right spot, or like, yes, sign me up. Yeah, you know, so we kind of look, especially when we get into condos, we look at overall number of units. Uh, so how many? And we call them doors. So how many front doors are, are in the complex? Yeah. And then how many bedrooms, um, you know, is, is it a complex where it's maybe all one bedroom condos, um, or is it a complex that it has two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms? Yeah. People um, are bringing big families down. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, so, so, oh, so one of our complexes is, is relatively small in the number of front doors, but is almost predominantly three bedroom units and people coming on vacation you know, typically it's, it's mom, dad, it's, you know, maybe two kids and then the kids bring a friend. Uh, so now you've got, you know, six, maybe eight people into a condo uh, and you take that times 200 and something units. Yeah. Now you've got a couple thousand people on property at any given time, all that need ice. Cause you know, they all want to go to the beach. They all want to go to the pool. Uh, nobody yeah. likes drinking a warm can of soda or a warm beer. Uh, so, you know, they're going to be buying ice and, so that's kind of how we measure it. You know, our, when we went into the campground, uh, we looked at number of sites uh, that were available for, you know, RVs or for campsites. Uh, and, and that particular location is, is fairly large. It can hold almost, I'm going to say has 300 RV sites and then uh, has the ability to expand into regular campsites. Uh, if somebody was just, you know, kind of putting up a tent or something, uh, a little more primitive camping, uh, as we call it, compared to some of the RVs that I've seen over there. Holy cow. Uh, but yeah, we kind of just look at that and see, you know, how many people can be here and is it somewhere that's, they're going to need ice. Um, yeah, you know, no, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it's, you know, and there's a fair amount of research that kind of needs to go into it. Uh, you know, whether you're going into locations sort of similar to ours, or if you're trying to find a roadside location, uh, maybe then you're looking at traffic counts, uh, ingress and egress of vehicles, you know, how, how easy is it for somebody to get to the machine, buy their ice and then get back onto the highway or the road. Uh, yeah. you know, so there's kind of a, quite a few things to sort of think about when you look at your locations that we sort of learned the hard way. All right. It's interesting that after just a couple installs, you kind of started to build this reputation as the ice guy and, you know, other <laughs> people start calling you like, Hey, what, what do you think about putting one in over here? I, I just think that's really interesting. We found that over and over again, like service businesses, it doesn't take a lot to get that word of mouth mm. kind of spinning in your favor. So I think that was um, encouraging to hear. So Steve, you got four of these now, uh, you got the construction business during the day. You know, where do you want to take this thing? Our goal is to, to kind of continue to grow the ice company and the ice business. Um, we see the demand there is constant. You know, it, 
it's not going anywhere. You know, we're starting to look more and more into the, the construction industry. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of blue collar workers and trade workers, uh, they buy ice every day. You know, it, these guys and girls that are going out and working on job sites, you know, they buy a bag of ice almost every day, you know, when they're getting their drinks together or, you know, trying to keep their lunch cold. Um, you know, so we're kind of looking more into some of those areas, working with, uh, you know, so, some development companies to get into some of the areas where, you know, there's just mass building going on. Uh, so we're kind of looking at those, you know, we're, we're always taking on sort of new ideas. Where can we put a machine? You know, what market can we tap into that maybe is underserviced uh, a yeah. little bit? So you know, our goal is to kind of creatively keep growing the ice business. Um, it is considerably easier to run the ice business than it is a construction company. Uh, so I, I like the idea of doing more and more ice and less and less construction. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not as young as I once was, so carrying, you know, stacks of lumber isn't as easy as it was in my younger days. And, uh, you know, my body certainly reminds me of that after a good week of work. And it's like, it's a lot yeah. easier to do ice. <laughs> you know? I can see it, you know, scaling up, you know, okay, now I only have to do four days a week. And now I only have to do three days a week. You kind of like can stair step your way up there as the yeah. empire of machines and locations grows. I think that could be encouraging. Yeah, you know, and we've talked to sort of a lot of other business owners. We even talked to some convenience store owners simply to ask them, are they happy with their current ice provider? Uh, some of them say, yeah, they're fine. You know, they, they deliver our ice, we sell the ice, everything works. But we've got a few that say, no, we're not happy because they cannot keep us in ice or they keep changing the price or their customer service is terrible. And, you know, so we gained that information by nothing more than just going in and asking a question. And, you know, some of those are now leading into some, some contract talks to maybe put a machine at some yeah. of these locations and replace their traditional ice service just because they can't be serviced and then they're disappointing their customers. You know, if they don't have ice to sell, you know, they're losing revenue. And some of the, the long established ice companies, I think got very comfortable uh, in a product that they know is going to sell and that the competition really wasn't out there. You know, there's yeah. not a lot of people doing ice. And I think a lot of them got kind of lazy for lack of a better term, and just said, well, we're the only game in town. Uh, and now with sort of, especially with the Everest machines and the self-sustainability of them, uh, it's kind of turning over the apple cart a little bit. And I think we're going to start seeing more and more uh, small businesses get into it, more kind of owner operators coming around, getting into it. Uh, you know, folks that, that are hungry, uh, not only to, to make money, but to provide a product and a service. And it, it's, as much as I want to say it's easy to grow, I mean, it does take a lot of work. It takes a lot of effort. Sure. But, you know, if you answer your phone and you show up when you say you're going to and do what you say you're going to, it kind of sells itself. Um, you know, I'm I'm amazed how many phone calls I get a week of people say, well, oh, my God, you answered the phone. Well, well yeah, you made it ring. You, you, <laughs> you called me, yeah. <laughs> you know, as long as I'm not terribly involved in something, yeah, chances are I will answer my phone. And, you know, and that's, yeah, that, led, you know, a lot of like, sort of just conversations with folks about potential machines. Um, you know, and it, it surprises me that there's a lot of kind of successes in business. But one of the first fundamentals is, yeah, just answer your phone. <laughs> it's that opens more doors than than kind of we would ever would have guessed. Yeah. And the, I mean, that the conversation you mentioned with uh, the, just asking the question, are you happy with your current ice provider? And you kind of probing there that appeals to me more so than uh you know committing to buy the machine and then be like all right now i gotta go find a, a location <laughs> like, oh if i could if i could have that penciled in before mm -hmm. placing it like i feel i feel a lot better about that but uh yeah. this has been awesome i'm taking a ton of notes very inspiring story excited to see where you take it beachside ice you can check steve out over there let's wrap this thing up with your number one tip for side hustle nation this does not have to be vending related this just is whatever entrepreneurial uh, wisdom that you'd like to impart run your business the way you would want to do business with uh you know where are you going to spend your hard-earned money and you want it, a company you can build a relationship with have a rapport with feel comfortable with and as if you're the consumer doing that well now your job as the business owner is to build that business the same way and it's amazing how the dividends come back three four five times in fold 
uh, from doing something very simple, uh, you know, and, and so I always encourage folks, you know, do, do what you say and say what you do and you'll be okay. Uh, it, it, things will happen for you without you really having to, to go to extraneous efforts. Um, and it's, sometimes it's just that simple and it, it still amazes me every day that it works. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate you sharing that. I just have a couple uh, notes or takeaways that I wanted to highlight. The first was on location, doing your homework, uh, as far as where is that thirsty crowd going to be? Where am I going to find consistent demand and how can I put my product or service, even if it's not ice vending, how can I put my product or service in front of those people? And I think that was a really good way uh, to illustrate that. Oh, how many doors does this place have? How many people are coming through this campground on a you know daily, weekly basis? Makes a lot of sense. Getting the business uh, some visibility on Google for free. I love that. And mm -hmm. then uh, the relationships, taking care of your customers. Hey, the phone number's on there. Call me. I'm going to pick it up. Oh, I can dispense this stuff remotely. How cool is that? And the relationships with the property owners, property managers as well, making sure everybody is uh, upfront and happy with that situation. So it, super inspiring. I don't know if the seasonality is going to work for me uh, up in the Northwest, but definitely got my gears turning because there's a beach near us that is just wall to wall people uh, mm -hmm. in the summer. And it's a, it's a state park. So it's like, oh, well, I wonder what it would be like selling into a local government situation, but like, oh, that would be perfect for it. Cause I don't think there's anything there right now. And you know, those people are just baking in the sun. So uh, definitely got my gears turning. If you're new to the show, awesome. Thank you so much for spending a little time with us today. If you're serious about making extra money, I have spent the last 10 years interviewing incredible side hustle entrepreneurs like Steve to deconstruct how they started, how they grew their businesses in limited hours. I would love to build you a personalized playlist of the side hustle show episodes that are going to be most relevant and impactful for you to get yours. All you got to do is go to hustle that show, answer a few short multiple choice questions, and you'll get that custom curated playlist that you can add to your device. You can learn what works and you can go forth and make some more money. Once again, that's at hustle.show. Big thanks to Steve for sharing his insight. Thanks to HelloFresh and Ladder for sponsoring this week. As always, you can hit up sidehustlenation.com slash deals for all the latest offers from our sponsors in one place. Thanks for supporting the advertisers that support the show. It really does make a difference. That's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, let's go out there and make something happen. And I'll catch you in the next edition of the Side Hustle Show. Hustle on.